Hello you and welcome to the cool coast of my apartment and specifically my couch. This is volume 37 of Ask a Brit, the format in which I ask you to ask me any question you like in the comments below using the hashtag Ask a Brit. That way I can find your question in the comments ahead of next week's volume. Um, but today it's quite a musically themed episode. I'm not going to get my guitar out again, you know, because it's broken. Otherwise you would be subjected to that. I might still subject you to that, but more on that later, perhaps, probably not. But the stars aligned that at least three of you, I've got my LaCroix, the drink of millennials, asked me questions about music. And so that's what we're going to kick off with today. And the first question comes from Brock, uh, who asks, why do most Americans think that our music is better than British music? They confuse me. I understand, Brock. I'm totally and utterly a little bit with you on this, uh, in that most of my favourite music is British. Now, I, I do have a bias, of course, toward that. that but if you you listen to a lot of the classic rock stations here in the US, a lot of the music playing, I would say almost 50%, if not more, uh, comes from British bands. So you've got the Beatles, you've got the Rolling Stones, you've got Pink Floyd, you've got Led Zeppelin, you've got Queen, you know, right through to all the others, and there are others. But we have to acknowledge that all of those artists were inspired by American music, rock and roll and jazz. Uh, to some extent. So, um, you know, it's nice that we took that mantle and ran with it and had the British invasion more than once. In fact, there was a British invasion in the 1980s too, uh, with the start of MTV. In fact, the first song uh, to be played, I believe, on MTV, Video Killed the Radio Star, was in fact a British hit. But, you know, a lot of my favourite music actually comes from the US. You know, Bob Dylan, for example, who I'm told is American. It's hard to understand him these days. Um, but back in the day, he definitely had a twang, as it were. And then you've got to think of some of the pioneers of, of rock and roll music, for example. You know, Chuck Berry, Elvis Presley, Buddy Holly, Nickelback. <laughs> I'm kidding. Nickelback, a Canadian, and crap. Now, Jason Schultz has a related question to this, and Jason asks, why is British rock music so much better than American music? So if we we are to take the viewpoint that British music is better than American music. Not my viewpoint necessarily. I'm just passing on the message, as it were. But I would look at it in certain ways. We are a small island, right? We're an isolated island. So maybe thoughts of isolation lead to good art. I don't know. Um, it is an interesting But we had movements, of course. We had the, the Merseyside scene, uh, the Manchester scene, and then music that grew out of London as well. And, so, and I think further to that, if you think about the richness of British history, specifically when it comes to the arts, I mean... We provided Shakespeare, you know, uh, we are we are people of words, I suppose, and of literacy. And so that translates a little bit to music. We're able to tell a story in a way that we can connect to um, that uh, those ages of literature uh, that go back. And sticking to the theme of music, 327HKS asks, what were some of your favourite concerts you've been to in the UK? My faves here were Paul McCartney and Wings, bloody hell, Pink Floyd and the Cranberries. R.I.P. Dolores, who sadly just passed away uh, from the Cranberries. Um, I Weirdly, I haven't been to too many gigs, as it were, um, but I have been to a couple here and there. I went to see Ocean Colour Scene in 1999 with my friend in Birmingham, um, and they were supported by Paul Weller. Um, I, I don't know that Ocean Colour Scene really made quite a wave over here, despite their name, right? That would be pun galore if they did, but they were in fact lost in the pond, as it were. They never really made it uh, beyond the Atlantic. It's probably because of how they spell the word colour, you know, as to why they never made a splash. <laughs> It's another pun there. Sorry about that. Um, and and that was that was largely it. I mean, I went to see, uh, just by invite, uh, Jason Mraz in 2008. Um, but I never got to any of the, the big festivals or anything like that. And I certainly haven't been fortunate enough to see Paul McCartney and or Wings. And so, you know, I'd be happy to go back and get all muddied up and go into the fields of Glastonbury again at the ripe old age of, I don't know, 49 or something and take my tent with me. That would be ridiculous actually at this late stage i'm i'm a simple man you know as you've probably noticed from my videos i like to just sit in and listen to music and and it has to be quiet levels yeah that's that i was i do get occasionally dragged to my brother-in-law's band you know and that's about as much as i can stomach he's good don't get me wrong um it's the people 
I don't like. All right, the next question comes from uh, Anna Daisy Bird, who asks, have your parents or any other family members come to visit you in the States? If yes, what was their impression of your life here? And if no, is there a reason they won't visit the States? Well, the answer is no, and the reason is they're lazy buggers. I'm kidding, mum, if you're watching. Um, no, the reason is uh, they're old. I'm joking again, don't take offence. What are you... It is my mum's birthday coming up, so... Yeah. Um, no, I think the reason is, you know, it, it is a long distance and it's a lot of money to spend to come visit. And um, my my family prefer the sort of the beach holidays in, in Spain and places like that to the uh, city thug life of Chicago. You know, I don't exactly sell it to them, obviously. Um, but yeah, they, they've never visited and I've never been back to England. So fair trade in a way. It's hardly a trade, is it? Nothing for nothing. But actually, I am hoping to outdo them later this year. But more on that later in this video. Okay, next question comes from Young Life Represented Entertainment. YouTube name of the week, no doubt. And uh, Young Life Represented Entertainment, or for short, YLRE. I'll call you that next time. It's quicker. Is it quicker? It might not be, because you still have to say all of those letters. Anyway, uh, what all do you know about the state of South Dakota? I live here and foreigners don't really think about it. Well, I think about all 50 states, and I have done from a young age. I know for a fact that the capital of South Dakota is Pierre. It is also the state that houses Badlands National Park and it's where you will find Mount Rushmore and so for those reasons alone I've often thought of going there. I've heard it's cold in parts. Badlands looks amazing. I've talked about this before but it just looks so jagged. You know I wouldn't want to ride my bike around there because I might lose a tyre and my own accent which is slowly disappearing week by week. How do you speak in, in South Dakota? That's something I'm less familiar with. Send me your accent, Y-L-R-E. Don't know how you're going to do that. You can't really email it to me. Uh, I'm out of ideas. Okay, uh, next question comes from IB Stevie B. Do you think the Queen is a subscriber to Ask a Brit? She bloody better be, if only for the notoriety on second thoughts. I might be in prison for treason if ever I went back there uh, for some of the things I have said about her family over the last few weeks. I'm kidding. I'm, I mean, for the most part, I am quite nice, I think, to the royal family. Um, I, I like to think that I send them at least two or three visitors um, every year, which, if you think about it, is contributing to the tourist pounds that uh, come about through the existence of the royal family themselves. So I have a lot to say still from here in the economy of the United Kingdom. I say a lot, uh, very little, actually. In fact, I've no confirmed reports that anybody has uh, visited the United Kingdom on my recommendation, but it, it could have happened. But if she is a subscriber, I wouldn't be too surprised because I did hear a story that the Queen actually does go out in her car in disguise and drives around. She might not anymore. I mean, she is in her early 90s. Um, but back in the day, she would. She'd put on a disguise. So she'd drive around alongside the public, you know, 50% of whom don't care for her, and, uh, you know, drive up to Tesco, get some chops go home you know i'm making that last part up there's no verified report that she ever went to tesco maybe to open one cut a ribbon say hi you know it's the kind of thing she does but uh unlikely to mingle with that riffraff and the next question comes from art on the fridge uh joint youtube name of the week uh, art on the fridge um asks I'd love to hear your thoughts on touring England by car versus train and or bus. Cars are more convenient, I assume, but perhaps by public transport, one gets to meet local people and get more of a feeling for the place. That's what the Queen says. I'm kidding. She's never done that. Well, she has been on a train. That that I do know. Um, not sure how limiting that would be, though, in terms of hard-to-reach places. How would you rather tour England? Well, so for the most part, you can get to a lot of places by train. Yeah, far more than you can in America, because it's just in interconnected through the National Rail Service and you can get to a lot of places. Now there are buses running to those places often that you can't reach by train as well. So comprehensively you could mostly get to places via train but you know if cars are your thing they're not really mine I don't drive. Obviously you would have to learn to drive on the correct side of the road. The other side of the road. Nobody is saying one is better than the other. Um, but, uh, you know, if, you, if you're able to do that, just know that you have to fit into smaller cars because they're tiny over there. And, you know, I miss that. I was saying to somebody on Twitter the other day, because I'm on Twitter, <laughs> at Lost in the Pond US, follow me now, that, you know, I kind of miss the quaintness of small cars. Now, like I say, I don't drive myself, but just being in them as a passenger to my chauffeur, my wife, 
um, or you know just seeing them go past I, I kind of miss that but anyway I'm getting sidetracked either way I would definitely I've always said this I suggest visiting outside of London you know don't just stick to London go up into the hills of the Lake District go see York go see uh, north of that even you've got places like uh, Carlisle you've got on the other side of the coin Newcastle which is a place I've never been to but would always like to and it looks great then you've got the south coast you know you've got the likes of Devon and Cornwall you've got the likes of Brighton further along you've got Dover you know where um, you've got those white cliffs and then around the corner you've got the uh, the seven sisters and then uh, you've got Norfolk you've got Suffolk you've got Cambridge you've got Oxford you've got the Midlands you know with Birmingham and Derby and Nottingham and all these places then you've got Liverpool you've got Manchester then if you want to go outside of England you've got Scotland you've got Edinburgh you've got Glasgow you've got all of those cold places up north that nobody goes to unless they've had whiskey which you can get a plenty in Scotland and then there's Wales. I love Wales. You know, um, I've not been to South Wales, but North Wales is bloody marvellous and beautiful. Um, so go to all those places and wh whether it be by car or train, I say go. Train is expensive, but if you're only there for a short time, it might be worth looking into. Um, you can do that by going to, I think it's uh, nationalrail.com. Um, or is it .co.uk? It's one of those. You can Google it, you know, and, and that's a good way to look it up. But you can rent cars there too, um, and it's nice. But plan your route before going, you know, but just know that whatever state you're from, there's a good chance that England itself is about the same size or smaller than your home state. So you get to somewhere uh, pretty quickly uh, from A to B. It doesn't matter where. Okay, next question comes from Susie Q. And Susie Q asks, Since you give up something every year, have you considered adding something? Like read a different book each month, hit the gym three times a week. What are you trying to say? You're right. Uh, eat more yogurt. Eat more yogurt. If I ate any more yogurt, I'd become a, a bowl of yogurt uh, instead. And, well, here's the thing, actually, Susie. When I give up something, I do replace it with something else. So, for instance, when I gave up pop in uh, 2014, yes, I replaced it with both one of these, LaCroix, drink of the millennials again, because of the fizzy nature. I had to replace the fizzy nature. Um, but I also replaced the caffeine aspect of pop with coffee. Um, so that's just an example. And I do that each time. This year, as I said before, I've given up, you know, being on the internet in any capacity after 10 o'clock at night. And I've replaced that with, well, reading a book. And I just recently... Um, read uh, The Princess Diarist by Carrie Fisher, who is one of the wittiest people I've ever known. I didn't know her, but I did go see her speak once, and it was brilliant. Getting sidetracked again. The next question comes from Gabrielle Paulino, and Gabrielle asks, Have you watched The Crown, and do you think the depiction of Prince Philip is accurate? I have not watched The Crown. Blasphemy, I know. Shoot me in the head. Don't do that. That would be a crime, and I'd be dead, and there'd be no more Ask a Brit. But as I understand it, Prince Philip is uh, depicted as somewhat of a Time Lord, because he's played by Matt Smith, who played the 11th Doctor. That's about the extent of what I know. Now, if they depict Prince Philip as a curmudgeonly racist man then they're probably onto something <laughs> I've just remembered the Queen's watching sorry, I'm so sorry Lizzie Liz, Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth, your Royal Highness Okay, and the final question today comes from Ian Davies, and Ian asks, when are you both going to visit the UK? Ten years is too long, and surely you will get loads of great content from the trip. Oh, it's so true. The The amount of things I would do with a camera if I went back to England, you know, most of them clean. Don't get any thoughts in your head. Um, is is astronomical. It would be it would produce at least ten to twenty videos just from that trip alone. I'm also health permitting. More on that in a later video. Trying to get to all fifty states, right? Um, so it's it's trying to get all these trips into into a short time frame and be able to pay for them, I suppose as well. Um, but we do have a plan to visit the UK this Christmas, as in Christmas 2018. Now I've said that in the past, and it hasn't happened for a variety of reasons. But I'm determined that this time it will happen and I'll show you my hometown, I'll show you my people, and I'll show you the place that I was born. No, I, won't. I probably won't be able to get access to that. Plus it's of no interest to anybody. Um, but I, I will show you guys a lot of that at Christmas, maybe. I mean, I, I don't want to promise anything. If it doesn't happen, then say la vie. That's it for this volume of Ask a Brit. Do keep your questions coming using the hashtag Ask a Brit. And remember to follow me on Twitter, at Lost in the Pond US. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook and go to my website, lostinthepond.com. Until next week, hug a millennial. Just drink your drinks.